Can you believe it? Already, Pope Benedict XVI is stepping down in less than a week. I mean, we just found out that he was resigning. So who's going to take his place? You know that none of the contenders are really household names in the U.S., so we're going to get to know them right now to help us out with that. Senior Vatican analyst John Allen, thanks for joining us again this weekend. Let's talk about this first hey, cardinal no. who's once known as the Crown Prince of Catholicism, a very fancy title, might I say. But what else do we know about him? Well, Cardinal Angela Skoll of Milan, I think the book on him, Natasha, would be that he's sort of Benedict XVI with a slightly stronger popular touch. That is, comes out of the same intellectual circles, but a lot of in-the-trenches pastoral experience working with people. Also, by the way, has a strong background in dialogue with Islam, and a lot of cardinals think that's going to have to be near the top of the to-do list for the next pope. Okay, what about a media-savvy pope? Because there's one cardinal who's known for that. He's even tweeted about Amy Winehouse, right? Yeah, Gianfranco Ravazzi would be considered uh, not a, one of the most media savvy, communications saturated figures in the College of Cardinals. Great intellectual with a strong popular touch. I mean, when he talks in churches, they're filled usually with a lot of young people. Problem with the Ravazzi would be that he's never really worked in a parish or a diocese, and a lot of cardinals think that that's sort of a prere prerequisite to be the Pope. Okay, and then there's also um, this guy who could be the first black pope if he's elected, Cardinal Peter Turkson. What do we know about him? Uh, well, Turkson would be seen as one of the most energetic, dynamic sort of faces and voices of this burgeoning Catholic Church in Africa, which, by the way, grew about 7,000 percent during the 20th century. And so it's, it's where Catholicism is growing the most rapidly. Uh, now, he has some very liberal views on things like the economy and war and peace, some very traditional conservative views on matters of sexual morality. Uh, but in any event, there would be a lot of excitement around him. I think the big knock would be that maybe he doesn't quite yet have enough Vatican seasoning. Some cardinals would say he'd make a great pope, but maybe not today. Okay. Uh, one other person I want to talk about, a possible successor, a Brazilian man who has family heritage working in his favor. Do you know who this is? Yeah, Cardinal uh, Scherer, uh, his parents are, were uh, children of German immigrants to Brazil. So in that sense, there's almost a kind of family tie to Benedict XVI. Uh, it would be seen as a guy, sort of moderate to conservative, but a guy who really knows how to make the trains run on time. He uh, actually, for about eight years, worked in the Vatican's all-important congregation for bishops. And Natasha, believe me when I tell you that in the Catholic Church, having the power to name bishops is a great way to win friends and influence people. And that was part of our interview about possible Pope contenders. In just a minute, though, you're going to hear about an American cardinal who created quite a buzz in recent days. So a minute ago, I told you about four cardinals who have a good shot at becoming the next pope. But there is another candidate who has the youth factor working for him. I asked our Vatican analyst about him. Listen, um, what about this cardinal? Uh, he's also called the man of the people in his native Philippines. I'm kind of partial to him. My brother's Filipino. But what do we know about him? I have no idea about him. But I know you do. Uh, well, Cardinal Tagli, whose nickname, by the way, is Chito, everybody calls him Don Chito, uh, is uh, one, of the, one of the most attractive young figures in the Asian church. He would be considered a, a great communicator, uh, somebody who has a particular gift for reaching out to young people. Big knock against him, of course, is he's young. He's 55 years old. And uh, in the old days, you know, that would be almost an insuperable bar because you would say we're going to be stuck with this guy for 30 years. But now that we know that popes can resign, it may have changed the calculus, cardinals may look and say he could give us 10 or 15 years and move on. Yeah, that's a good point. And yeah, you bring up a great point in that, you know, you're used to seeing them a bit older, shall we say, with white hair, not dark hair. So that would be something to mix it up. Uh, there's a lot of buzz Yeah, about on the other hand, given the... Go ahead. I, I'm sorry, I was just going to... Given the burdens of this office, he may come into it with dark hair. You can bet your <laughs> bottom dollar he'd walk out with white. Yeah, kind of like the president of the United States. They always start out that way, too. Uh, there's also been buzz about uh, one American name in recent days. What can you tell us about Cardinal Sean O'Malley? Well, you see him there wearing his very simple brown Capuchin Franciscan habit. Uh, you know, I, I think the attraction of O'Malley is, first of all, he's seen as a reformer on the child sex abuse scandals in the church. Of course, had to clean up a god-awful mess in Boston uh, 10 years ago. Uh, and second, for an institution, that is the Vatican, that, that is often seen as a kind of bevy of power games and intrigue and financial wheeling and dealing, the imagery of this very simple, humble, spiritual man, a lot of people think that would be a healthy dose of, uh, of symbolism. Yeah, and I know as we speak in Italy, there are rumors swirling about the whole you know, scandal going on. Um, 
with the sex scandal and talk about that with and Benedict's name trying to be cleared of that. Do you think this is the person who could help clear that up? Oh, I think a lot of people think that he might be able to. I think the big knock on O'Malley is that he's basically a stranger to the Vatican. He, he's never worked there and hasn't spent a whole lot of time in Rome. And for cardinals who think that the next pope really has to get that place under control, uh, having somebody who might be seen as a kind of a wide-eyed outsider might be a pretty serious question mark. All right. Well, a lot ahead for sure, John Allen. Thank you so much. You bet.